Hey, what is up mortals? It is Ellen here with a new video for you. Welcome to part 10 of What If Saitama Was in MHA. I just wanted to greet you guys by saying, sit back and relax, you're in for a treat. So, we begin. Bakugo and Midoriya stared each other down like an unspoken staring contest was taking place. Midoriya took a moment to think. There was so much emotional buildup for this moment that it would just seem anticlimactic for the battle to just end like his other matches. But at the same time, did Bakugo deserve to be treated any differently than in his other matches? The blonde bullied him relentlessly for his entire life, so why should Midoriya humor him by going easy? He didn't have time to finish thinking as the sounds of the countdown passed. Bakugo roared as he used his explosions to fly towards Midoriya at high speeds. Despite losing to Midoriya various times already, he still went after the freckle teen with reckless confidence. Maybe after his match with Todoroki, he believed that he could defeat anything. It was a shame Todoroki lost. Midoriya was looking forward to fighting against him. He would most definitely prefer fighting him than Bakugo. Speaking of Bakugo, the teen extended an explosion-filled fist and threw a punch at Midoriya, but the freckle teen caught it. Bakugo was stunned by Midoriya's reflexes and struggled as he attempted to dislodge his hand from Midoriya's grip, to no avail. What do you think you're doing, Deku? I want you to admit we're equal! And can you quit it with that nickname? How many times do I have to prove to you that I'm not useless? Until you admit that you have a quirk! All your life you were a useless little Deku who couldn't defend himself until you suddenly developed this power! Then you were able to defeat me! You couldn't have done that without a quirk! Look, I don't know why I don't have a quirk! I don't know how or why an exercise routine gave me this power! And I don't understand why you care so much about it! Because it was supposed to be me! I was supposed to be the hero who defeats villains and becomes number one! It's what everyone expects of me until you came along to take that all away from me! What? How is it my fault you feel threatened by me? I've worked so hard to get to this point! All my life I had to be stronger, smarter, tougher! But then you waltz in quirkless and weak and try to help me? Me, the future number one hero being offered help by a Deku? And now look at you! What I've worked for my entire life is being overshadowed by someone who just did a year of training! How in the world is that fair? How do you expect me to believe you and to be friends with you when you represent everything I hate about myself? Present Mike whispered to his co-hosts, Hey, uh, I think we should cut the cameras. This is getting pretty intense. Aizawa sighed. Don't worry, I already did. Did they really have to pick a live, televised event to have this argument? Saitama commented, Well, at least we get to go home soon. Midoriya was stunned into silence. All this time, he believed that he worked harder than anyone to be a hero. But that was a narcissistic view. Bakugo worked his entire life to keep up his reputation as the next All Might. Todoroki spent his entire life battling his father's expectations and his inner turmoil. Even Momo had the pressure of perfection haunting her every day. It was selfish to think that he worked harder than anyone else because, at the end of the day, everyone had made their own sacrifices to get here. Midoriya began to question his worldview. He never realized how flawed his perception was. What makes a hero? Can Midoriya confidently say that he is a hero? Did he deserve to win this sports festival? He was so confused and ashamed of himself that he did what he felt was best. After a much too awkward moment of silence passed, Midoriya finally let go of Bakugo's hand. The freckle teen muttered, I forfeit. Bakugo was not happy to hear this, evident in how he grabbed Midoriya's shoulders and shook him violently. What? No, you don't! You don't get to just forfeit like that! We didn't even fight! Bakugo was cut off by the sound of present Mike's voice emitting from the intercoms. The winner of this year's sports festival is, uh, Katsuki Bakugo! Sorry to the audience at home for the cut in the video feed, but trust me, you did not want to see what happened! Confetti rained down from the sky as the confused crowd applauded. Bakugo was dragged away by Midnight and Cementos as he screamed and thrashed, demanding a rematch. The award ceremony went by fast as Midoriya was too busy attempting to process what Bakugo had said. He stood on the second place podium with Bakugo chained up next to him on first. Todoroki stood on the third place spot alongside them. Midoriya was too consumed by his thoughts to notice how Ida was absent. 
After the ceremony, Midoriya was walking off of campus when he heard Uraraka chasing after him. Midoriya, wait up! She looked concerned and panicked. Once she caught up to him, she caught her breath and spoke. The hero assassins attacked Ida's brother! Midoriya was shocked. Ingenium? No way! Can you tell me who the hero assassins are? Uraraka explained. They just announced their team up a couple of hours ago during the sports festival. It's Stain, the hero killer, and Garo, the hero hunter. Their first target was Ingenium. Hearing this, Midoriya suddenly remembered some news articles he read a couple of months ago. There were rumors that Garo was the top disciple of the S-class hero Bang, but the hero never confirmed the rumors. Midoriya finally replied, Is he okay? Ida, I mean. Uraraka's face fell. Midoriya knew what that meant. His brother ended up dying on the way to the hospital. Ida is with his family in Hosu. They're having a funeral service later tonight. Midoriya ended up going to the funeral to pay respects to Ingenium and give Ida his support. He saw Ida's crestfallen face at the front of the stage, but he was sure that Ida didn't see him. His eyes were glazed over with tears and anger. His eulogy was heart-moving, but Midoriya could sense malice bubbling over each word he spoke. How Ida ended the speech is what concerned him the most. I promise, Tensei. I will honor your legacy. I will make sure the hero assassins will see justice. This video is sponsored by NordVPN. Staying safe online is an ever-growing difficulty, and hackers could exploit you. NordVPN allows you to change your IP address, making you harder to track, securing your privacy. In addition to providing you with safe passage through the web, you can also expand the reach of your favorite streaming services. Are you tired of going through two, three, or even four streaming services to watch your favorite anime? Well, with NordVPN, you can change your country and be able to binge shows like My Hero Academia, Naruto, and many others on your favorite streaming service with just a press of a button. Check out the link in the description to get 72% off when buying for two years for $3.29 a month. This deal is for a limited time. And thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. The next day of school was a day off as the second year sports festival was taking place. Midori was spending his time at Takubo Municipal Beach Park with Saitama and Genos. Of course, upon meeting the cyborg hero, Midoriya had a massive fanboy moment. The youngest S-class hero in history was only 19 years old with a tragic backstory. At age 15, his town was massacred by a rampaging cyborg. He miraculously survived, and a doctor who happened to pass through the town found him. The doctor transformed Genos into a cyborg so that he could fight for justice and one day find and destroy the cyborg who killed his town. The three were peacefully walking along the shoreline, talking about the sports festival and Midoriya's recent revelation. So, I wanted to ask you guys, what do you think makes a hero? Or, what even is a hero? Saitama's answer was simple. Someone saves the day by defeating villains, saving civilians, and looking cool while doing it all. Although Saitama wasn't wrong, his answer offered no value to Midoriya. Genos's answer was... Well, hear it for yourself. A hero is defined as a person who is admired or idealized for courage, outstanding achievements, or noble qualities. This implies that a hero isn't necessarily a trait, but a perception held by a group of people in alignment with societal morals, ethics, and culture. A hero in one context can be perceived as a villain in another. So for my answer, I believe that a hero is a paradoxical concept that is abstract and a byproduct of humans' inherent need for definitive parameters for right and wrong, even though such parameters do not and cannot exist. Midoriya replied, I'm sorry, and with all due respect, what the fu- Suddenly, the villain warning siren began going off. A demon-level threat is loose in City Z. All civilians stay indoors at all costs! An alarm like that going off wasn't uncommon in City Z. For some reason, there was a lot of villain activity in that area, causing it to become a ghost town with few residents. The cost of living was dirt cheap as a result, though, which was good for those who were unemployed, like Saitama and Midori's mother. Despite the alert of a demon-level threat, Saitama and Midoriya continued to walk and talk. Genos tensed. The Hero Association advised us to remain indoors so we should evacuate this area. Saitama brushed off Genos' concern with a wave of his hand. Don't worry about it, the villains here aren't too bad. As he said this, a single mosquito landed on his shoulder. Genos laughed when he saw it. 
Hey, Saitama, remember when we first met? It was when the city was attacked by mosquitoes. I asked to be your student, and you rejected me. Without hesitation, Saitama slammed his hand against the mosquito. Huh? I don't remember. I thought I met you at the adult hero class. Despite the strong force of the attack, the mosquito didn't die. When the insect flew away unharmed, Genos and Saitama shared a look. The sultry voice of a woman caused all three heads to turn in her direction, and both Genos and Saitama's jaws dropped. It was a woman with an insect mutation that gave her the appearance of a giant mosquito. Surrounding her was a swarm of mosquitoes which made Midoriya's skin crawl at the sight. Hey boys, it's been a while, hasn't it? Don't worry, I'm here for the boy. Don't want to keep Shigaraki waiting. Oops, I wasn't supposed to say that out loud, was I? Oh well, I'm sure he'll forgive me. This villain was sent by the League of Villains to kidnap him? Why him? And how did they know where he lived? Saitama? Genos? Who is she? Midoriya panicked. The pair didn't answer as they prepared to fight. Saitama clenched his fists and Genos' cyborg limbs transformed into weapons. Mosquito Girl sent a swarm of mosquitoes towards the two adults, temporarily blinding them with a smokescreen of bugs. As the insects blinded Genos and Saitama's vision, the mass picked up Midoriya from the ground. Midoriya was flown in the air away from Saitama and Genos. He could see flashes of fire-based attacks from Genos and the blasts of air from Saitama's punches dispersing the swarm. The buzzing of the mosquito's flight was drilling into his head, but he could still hear the sound of his kidnapper's voice. Why would the League want a plain-looking kid like you? I personally would want that blonde cyborg. He's much cuter in my opinion. The villain was flying above him as she directed her swarm towards an unknown location. The sensation of thousands, if not millions, of bugs crawling over his skin made him want to take a shower in burning hot lava in order to never have to feel anything touching him ever again. Midoriya never had a fear of bugs before, but now it would be surprising if he didn't develop some sort of entomophobia. Projectiles flew past Mosquito Girl as Genos attempted to shoot her down, but she efficiently dodged and weaved between attacks. Saitama was doing his best to dispel the swarm on the ground while Genos focused on the sky. They were trying so hard to save him, and Midoriya felt useless and helpless against the kidnapping. Midoriya thrashed his body around like a toddler having a tantrum. He tossed, turned, and flailed so violently that he was able to shake off many mosquitoes, but their multitude allowed them to replace those that were thrown off. It seemed like the mosquitoes themselves were a hive mind, so taking them out individually would be useless. What he needed to do would be to take out the control center. Her quirk prevented him from escaping or moving around, so he couldn't get close to her. Maybe he could get her to get close to him. Um, hey, Mosquito Lady, why are you kidnapping me? Midoriya probed. She scoffed. Mosquito Lady, I can't believe you haven't heard of me. I am Mosquito Girl from the House of Evolution. Midoriya had no idea who she was, but he had heard of the House of Evolution. The founder was obsessed with the idea that humans can evolve faster than their current rate. He created the House of Evolution, and he evolved his patients with man-made mutations and quirks. He was the first person to ever develop artificial quirks, and one day, the lab was destroyed, and the founder was never seen again. The media and government tried to cover up the House of Evolution's publications, but Midori was able to get his hands on some books after some digging. Using this knowledge, maybe Midoriya could feed into her ego. The House of Evolution? I can't believe someone with such a powerful quirk is artificially made. You must be their best subject. Midoriya plastered on the fakest smile he ever forced himself to make, but Mosquito Girl seemed to not notice. She laughed and dodged another blast from Genos before speaking. <laughs> You sure are a flatterer. I would keep you for myself if my livelihood wasn't on the line. Wouldn't want my quirk to be taken after working so hard to get it. Midoriya's eyebrows furrowed in confusion. Getting her quirk taken away? Midoriya had never heard of such a procedure that would permanently remove someone's quirk factor. He should pry some more. How would someone even take away such an amazing quirk? Isn't that impossible? Oh, honey, you have no idea. All for what- I mean, Shigaraki is a powerful man. You must have messed up big time to get on his bad side. Midoriya felt like he was getting close to finding something out. He just needed to pry a bit more information out of her. He was on the verge of a revelation. Midoriya opened his mouth to speak, but then Saitama appeared. I hate bugs. In an instant, Mosquito Girl was thrown to the ground and her swarm dispersed. 
Midoriya began falling but was caught by Genos who gently put him back down on the solid ground. Soon, police arrived on the scene and arrested the villain. As she sat in the police car, she gave Midoriya a warning. You should watch your back, kid. There's a storm brewing in the villain world, and it's not just you they're after. It was a wildly eventful past two days. The sports festival, a funeral, then a kidnapping back to back. But it seemed like the chaos wasn't quite over for Izuku Midoriya. To his left was a blonde marching over angrily with sparks in his hands. To his right was a heterochromatic teen sauntering over with determination in his eyes. The blonde arrived first, declaring, Fight me! Right here, right now! The dual quirk user arrived second, saying, I want to learn from you, Midoriya. Fight me. Midoriya cried, I just got kidnapped! Give me a break! Bakugo yelled in reply, Don't care, didn't ask! After that stunt you pulled at the sports festival, I'm not just gonna let it go! I demand a proper fight! Todoroki added, I never got to fight you during the sports festival as I promised. I want to see what more I can learn from you. Midoriya tried to dissuade the pair. Hey, how about we do this another day? Aren't you guys tired after the sports festival? They both replied simultaneously. No. no. Genos approached the pair and offered up an idea. I know the perfect location for a spar. It's only a couple miles away. Then let's go, Tin Can! Midoriya sighed. Today was not his day. Once the group arrived at the fighting location, Midoriya was in awe at the massive mountainous walls that surrounded him. He didn't have much time to sightsee, however, as Bakugo grew impatient. All right, we're here, so fight me! Todoroki interjected. I challenged him before you did, so he should fight me first. Midoriya attempted to mediate. Well, I can't fight you guys at the same time, so... Again, Genos offered a solution. I think fighting them at the same time would be beneficial for your training. Don't you think so too, Saitama? Saitama was attentively playing a game on his phone and simply replied, Huh? Yeah, sure, sounds good. Midoriya sighed and accepted his fate. If the plot demanded him to fight, then he'll give it his all. A battle between childhood rivals. A battle to fulfill an unfulfilled promise. Who will win? Who will lose? When will Midoriya finally catch a break? Find out next time on What If Saitama Was in MHA. Thank you all for sticking around, and I hope that you enjoyed. Before you leave, we would just like to let you know that We the Celestials has many other channels for your entertainment and viewing purposes. All the information you'll need is right below here in the description, so feel free to check out all the other incredible projects our team creates. Secondly, on behalf of We the Celestials, I'd like to thank everyone involved in the production of today's awesome content. Their details will be in the description below. That's all for today's video, so goodbye and have a divine day.